So you want to make games which are interesting, played by a lot of people, games which are memorable, games whose visuals stick in the player's mind long after they finish your game? Hey guys, I'm Bobby, the lead 3D artist of Alan Sharp, Wipe Total Plague and many other low-poly video games. I've worked for clients doing work as a freelancer over the internet. I'm also the digital marketing specialist of UX Labs. And in this video today, we're gonna talk about 8 hints that will boost your game art and help you create amazing video games. Let's get right into it. So the first technique I'm going to talk about is blocking or whiteboxing. I believe I've talked about this technique in a past video, but I don't mind talking about it again since it's part of game art and it will help you establish an amazing game. So basically blocking is using simple shapes like uh, squares in 2D games or circles or cubes and cylinders in 3D games to establish the first look of your level. So using a block out technique, you're gonna establish the critical and non-critical path of your levels. Uh, you will establish where the player can go, where he can go, and in that way you will have an overall feel how your level looks and how it will turn out to be. After you're satisfied with the blocking uh, stage of your level, then you can continue and swap those basic shapes and forms with your desired assets. Trust me guys, using the block out technique is very beneficial and it will help you when you're starting out with your game art. So the second tip would be using a stick out palette. So that's basically a color palette whose uh, colors are contrasting to each other and in return you will get engaging eye catchy visuals. So when a potential player scrolls down their social media feed, they will immediately notice your game's art. Let's take one of my most uh, beloved games, games which I adore, uh, that's Ori and the Blind Forest, which in my opinion has one of the most amazing game art ever. If you can see how the art of Ori and the Blind Forest is made, you will notice that the main character is quite bright as opposed to the background. So for the background they use different darker uh, colors and hues and the character is much much brighter and in that way by using contrast they can, they can establish um, visuals and images and gifs which will draw your attention when you're scrolling down your social media feed. Another great game I can say is uh, the first tree. Let's dive a bit into indie games. So the first tree I've seen it on Reddit, it's a great game, uh, it has amazing art uh, and as you can see in the game the fox is contrasting with uh, everything else around it and in that way it's disting distinguishable from the background. So you will need to establish a color palette which is contrasting and will draw your player's attention on your uh, targeted uh, social media. The third tip I could provide you about an awesome game art is using monochromatic colors. Monochromatic colors are basically all the colors of a single hue. So they have like a base hue and extend using in its shades, tones and tints. So let's dive a little bit about what are tints. Tints are basically the same color but added a little bit of white color to, to them to make it brighter or a black color to make it darker. So if you have, for example, a red color and you add white to it, you will make, you will make it a little bit brighter, and, but it's still going to be like a red color. If you add a black color to the red one, it will become darker, but it's still part of uh, the hue of the red color. So in, throughout the past few years, I've seen a lot of games who use monochromatic palettes and using only one or two co colors which made them memorable, uh, which made them very successful and the great thing is all of those games are basically indie games. Let's check them out and analyze their game art. Really so the first up. game here is Firewatch. It's two and a half miles off. And it's gonna have to break in the canyon, right? All right, well, use your best judgment. The second game is Cluster Truck. <laughs> the 
we have the amazing Phantom Pack. Then we have Bendy and the Ink Machine. tip I could give you guys is using art and graphics to evoke emotions. As human beings we tend to correlate certain colors and patterns uh, to our emotions and you will need to know that art needs to tell a story. So let's take the red color for example. If you see a red color it immediately uh, makes you think of possibly warning or maybe passion or alert or danger. Then we have the green color, which reminds us of calm, of tranquility, and of joy. So you will need to use those color palettes smart and use particular colors to evoke emotions in your players. So when texturing your models, think about this. How do you, how do you want your players to feel when entering a particular place? Do you want the player to feel happy or maybe sad? or maybe scared or lonely, it will all depend on the mood you want to create in that particular place. That's why evoking emotions through art is very important. The fifth hint to having a great game art would be using a lot of references. So guys, just do your research. Check out other artists' work in your genre, analyze their work, see how they solved a particular problem. So for example, if your game is a stylized game, check how other artists do that. Analyze their uh, artwork. And also, when you're designing, when you're texturing your models, use a lot of references, even from real life. Find all the necessary references, all the photos from the internet, which will help you establish a great looking game art. The sixth tip I could provide you is having art consistency. So your art needs to be consistent throughout the entire game. So when you're developing, uh, when you're modeling and texturing those uh, assets for your game, make sure all of those assets feel in a way natural to the world you're building. Keep in mind that all the lines, the textures, the shapes, the forms, the color palettes, they all affect the overall art of your game. So for example, if you're doing a stylized game, make sure that when you're seeing two different or three different assets, they feel like they are part of the same world. Let's take um, Valorant for example. Valorant is a stylized uh, multiplayer shooter and the art is amazing and it's consistent of course, it's a, it's a great game. But it will feel very unnatural if you see suddenly see a Call of Duty model popping up in front of you. So all of your art needs to be consistent throughout the entire game. A pro tip I could give you guys, which I read about a few years ago, about uh, establishing your characters, uh, is you always start with the character silhouette, especially if you're doing a 2D game. Uh, why is this important? Because if you manage to create a silhouette which is memorable, for example, let's take Disney's Mickey Mouse, for example. Even if you have a black background and Mickey Mouse is uh, entirely white, purely by the shape, the silhouette itself, you will recognize, yeah, that's Mickey Mouse. So this is one of the most powerful techniques you can use to establish memorable characters. Tip number seven will be define your art style. So in early pre-production, before you, you and your team start designing a game, while you're still discussing all those tiny bits how the development is going to be you will need to establish your art style so you will need to do your research find out what your audience wants what kind of games do they play see what kind of visuals do they like do, do your audience wants to play realistic looking games do they play stylized games or pixelated games or maybe even hand painted games so you will need to do your research and based upon that uh, define your art style and be consistent with it throughout the entire development process. And the last or eighth tip about having a great game art 
would be utilizing negative space. So you will need to have a delicate balance between positive and negative space. Let's check this black and white image for example, which if you look close, the black forms represent two faces and the white form in the middle looks like a vase. This image is called the Rubens vase. Now let's use this into a 3D game level design. What if you have an important model the player needs to look at? Something you want to use to evoke emotion in your players, like a tower maybe, where the player wants to go. You can position the tower in a way that there are other objects around it, but there is also a fair amount of space dividing these buildings from the tower, making the player focus on the tower itself. So I hope those 8 tips will help you boost your game art and create engaging, alluring visuals in your game. I hope this video has been very helpful and beneficial to you guys. If you find it helpful, please write down in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe uh, because we are building an amazing ever learning community. Learning can be easy if your passion and goals are true. So have a great day guys. Bye.